And welcome back. Final hour of uh, today's Steve Malsberg show, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, joining us uh, once again is uh, Governor Bob Ehrlich, former governor of the state of Maryland and the author of uh, a great book, America, Hope for Change, which I still think that's one of the greatest titles ever for, for a book. Um, welcome back, Governor. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Steve. Thanks for having me back. The book's going great. A Good. lot of touring, a lot of book signings, and a lot of fun. Well, great. Well, you know, we could talk about a lot of things, and we probably will get to them, but I want to, I want to go to a, a column you wrote at the Baltimore Sun, uh, <laughs> Ten Wishes for the New Year, and, uh, you, you know, you, you, you just run the gambit here. You talk about a, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, let, let's, let's go, well, let, let's do a, a David Letterman's top ten list. Uh, okay. We, we could go, go back, backwards instead of starting with the, uh, with the number one. Uh, okay. Why don't, why don't we talk about um, a, a federal sentencing review panel uh, to be uh, to be appointed? You you talk about uh, Americans facing long prison sentences for uh, relatively minor offenses. Yeah, we have uh, overcrowding in our federal system. Uh, it's the Republican governors and more conservative governors like myself who have really moved on this. I think liberal governors are still really Willie Hortonized, uh, if you will. Uh, they're scared to move here. But the bottom line is we have a lot of people in jail shouldn't be in jail. A lot of uh, uh, long sentences when Congress, uh, uh, unfortunately, has, has not moved uh, enough in this area. We have a broken, very broken uh, uh, office at DOJ in, in the pardons office, and I think the president, we have a progressive president who hasn't even moved on it. So I think that, that, that the right and left, you look for a bipartisan issue, some, an issue where everybody can come together and do something and do something good for justice, this is it. Yeah, no, I I, I, I I understand that, but are, are you talking about – now, does this include – you see, to me, there's a fine line here because you don't want to be lumped in, or maybe you do. Uh, you don't want to be lumped in with, uh, you know, like the, the mayor of New York, Bill de Blasio, who, no, in my I view, is, is a Marxist. Category. No, 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 yeah, I know. Yeah. And, and he, you know, one of the things he and his, his minions are, 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 are preaching about, as is the president in the Justice Department, is, you know, overcrowded in prison. We, we become a nation of prisons. We have the highest incarceration rate. Well, you know, in, 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 people break the law – they deserve to be in prison. And you're not talking about the cocaine versus crack disparity, are you? No, I'm not, I'm not talking about per se, although I think there's some merit to that argument. I'm just talking about uh, the fact that in some cases we have possession offenses and people looking at 10, 20, 30 years for, in our federal system because the federal sentencing guidelines, as you know, for years were, uh, were way too heavy. And, and what's interesting to me, as a Republican conservative governor, we moved in this area. Uh, the victims' rights folks supported me in my state. Other governors like John Kasich, good conservative governors around the country, Bobby Jindal, they're moving in this area as well. So uh, it's not just to get, by the way, it's not just a fiscal issue. It's a justice issue right, as right. well. Right, right. All right. Um, now, I, I love this one. Uh, put college uh, back into college football. And, you know, it has become, it, it, it's been this way for years, but now more so than ever, um, a huge business. And you talk about the 12-game the, the, uh, the, um, the, the schedule, you talk about the off-seasoning, the conditioning, and, you know, when do these guys have any time to, 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 to go to class? Look, I played at Princeton, and I'm not, I'm not advocating that the Ivy League models for everyone, but I do advocate that the Ivy League has a pretty good idea when it comes to limits. And the 12, we all talk, think about this, see, we're talking about all these injuries and, and concussions, and now we have a 12-game regular schedule. We have some of these kids playing 13, 14, 15 regular season games, plus practices, plus spring practice. It's crazy. It's a collision sport. The more you hit, the more you're going to get hurt, and, 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 and you're, the more time you're going to be out of the classroom. Whatever happened to a 10-11 game schedule, have a little playoff if you want the top four teams. But let's get back to some sort of, of normalcy in my view. Yeah, well, now you know, there are many who propose even a, a wider uh, crazy, crazy. Uh, playoff like schedule. schedule for <laughs> it's crazy. I know. It, it's, it, it's college. It is. It is great. All right, let's go about eight. And um, uh, 50 million people on food stamps, Social Security, more, more people on disability than ever before. Same with food stamps. Uh, this has become the food stamp president. I know that they, they say that's racist, but that's ridiculous. Um, and, and you want dependency uh, to not be cool again. I think it all started with the Obama phone, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have I didn't have a time to add that. I, I would if I remember that woman. That. I got uh, my Obama phone. Well, it started years ago, and it's just been taken to a uh, a new end game here with the Obama era. And, and the bottom line here is, people come up to me all the time, as they do you, and say, "Geez, how can we turn it around? Um, this is it." Once people get on the dole, well, there was a guy called Reagan uh, a few years ago. He made dependency uncool. And 
the right leader can again make dependency uncool. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And then I love the way you go back again here in number seven as we work our way up the top ten list with Bob Ehrlich, a former governor of Maryland and, uh, of course, the author of America, Hope for Change, his top ten uh, wishes for the new year. I hope we have time for all of them or we'll skip to the top one if we don't. Um, uh, that uh, schools and pro, pro, pro teams will stop replacing grass with artificial turf. i got to tell you, there's an artificial turf field in my town. All the others, you know, are grass. And it's a treat to play on it once in a while. But I, li I, I like – I don't play on it. But I, I like the – grass too I i'm with you i'm with you first of all it's more fun to watch yeah okay i just i don't even like watching games on that but if you're really serious and i understand the economics of turf and other teams practice and all that but if you're really serious about being concerned about injuries in a collision sport like football you're going to try to take some speed out of the game steve what quickens the game of football up artificial turf yeah and so i i think it's an injury issue and i think it's uh it, it's just football nobody's dirty it's not football yeah and and the the, the rug burns that you get there uh they're watch tough. the kids get rug burns they're awful all right uh an honest debate about renewable energy you know it's hard to have that because the left is still cl claiming that you know we're all burning up uh, global warming <laughs> bill clinton said it yesterday to when, in, when introducing bill de blasio how we have to address global warming it's fascinating it is just fascinating i have to tell you and i just want an honest debate. I want real science. And there's another one here as well um, uh, it, it, concerning fracking. And that's number four, as you know. Just, let's just cite the science, not what goofy Al Gore says <laughs> and running around the world in his jet and, all, and not what some lib or conservative or our side for that matter. Let's just use the science to come to scientific conclusions. Is that controversial? No. Yeah, all right. Um, at number five, and this was weighed in, uh, weighed in on by well, uh, Sonia Sotomayor, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, who put a stay on the uh, the um, the uh, mandate in Obamacare for religious groups to uh, have to uh, uh, pay for uh, and provide contraceptive uh, uh, benefits in in their health care. Um, this this is going to go to the Supreme Court. It should. I talk about this in the book an awful lot, by the way. There's a huge world of difference between the issue of birth control. Most people support birth control. I'm not going to get into, obviously, uh, religious aspects of it, but the fact of it is most people support birth control. And you can support birth control without, one, thinking taxpayers have to pay for it. And secondly, there's a world of difference between uh, 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 the issue of religious conscience and contraception. Uh, I'm uh, for birth control, but I also believe the Catholic Church, with whom I disagree with, I'm not Catholic, on, on, on numerous issues, but I believe the Catholic Church has a right to uh, uh, practice its religious conviction in, in the employment of its people. Right, and, and that's what Obamacare overturns. The Conscience Clause has been sacrosanct for decades yep, in this country yep. until Barack Obama. Well, that's not surprising, and I don't know when contraception became a guaranteed right in this country. I mean, go buy your own birth control pills, and and men have to go buy their own condoms. Anyway, um, okay, quickly, um, the, the, the merits of fracking, uh, we did that. Uh, that was four. Number three, if uh, African Americans could, uh, if, if Republicans could crack, as you put it, the, um, the Obama protection cocoon um, of, of the African American vote, right? Yeah, you know, it, it just came so clear to me the other day when an African American friend of mine just asked me, and we were at a basketball game, uh, our son's basketball game, we were, we, our son's playing the same team, and he said, Why do you guys all, why do you hate the president? And, you know, and I just, and as I as, as I articulate in the article, we don't, we don't hate the president. I, I I like certain aspects of the president. I really like. He's a family man. He's an American success story. All that stuff. But the fact of it is, we just disagree on issues. His platform, his philosophy, uh, you know, what he's trying to do, his transformative presidency. Yep. We disagree. It has nothing to do with race. I tell you what, uh, uh, Robert Ehrlich, uh, former governor of Maryland, if people want to see number one and number two, uh, they're <laughs> going to have to go to BaltimoreSun.com and check out 10 Wishes for the New Year, and they should also pick up uh, your book, Ho America, Hope for Change. And uh, uh, if you're in the, uh, town next week, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hook you up and uh, hopefully bring you up in the studio, sir. Look forward to it, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, Happy New Year. Same to you. My pleasure. That's uh, Governor Bob Ehrlich, former Governor of Maryland, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when we come back, did you see New Year's Eve? Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio.